what are derivatives? A derivative is an asset whose performance and hence value is derived from the behavior or the value of an underlying asset. So derivatives, their value is determined by what is underneath them. The most underlying are commodities. Commodities such as the tea, the coffee, the wheat, sugar. Mm -hmm. So most of them are commodities. And you know, I always argue that actually commodity futures make the story of futures much easier to understand. Commodity futures make the story of futures even much easier to understand what is happening. And I'll, I'll see if I can use an example of commodity futures to also help you see the point. But the underlyings also, based on which you can create a derivative, include shares, bonds, share indices, currencies, and interest rates. And for this topic, our interest is currencies. Yeah. You know, the prices of commodities fluctuates too much. A farmer goes to his field to plow today, and a 50 kg bag of maize is fetching 160 kwacha today. So it looks attractive. But once the farmer goes into the field, he plows, 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 by the time he gets to the market to go and sell, this price may have dropped. So what do you do as a farmer? There's so much risk. In that the prices fluctuate too much of the underlying products, which for instance could be the coffee, the tea, or in this case, I'm talking about the maize. So we are saying you can cover this transaction by using relevant derivatives, which have been created. So some clever people have created contracts which reflects what is happening underneath here. And although you're not a farmer, you can participate by buying and selling these instruments. So a derivative really is um, an asset whose value and its existence hmm, arises from the underlying item. Derivatives are contracts that give a right and sometimes an obligation, like we have seen futures, create an obligation to buy or sell a quantity of underlying variable or benefit in some other way from a rise or fall in the value of the underlying asset. So the one that we're talking about the futures, we have seen that here. once you take it up, you have an obligation. Like the one that we have just looked at, hmm? you have an obligation to buy dollars and you won't run away from this obligation. You won't run away from this obligation. You need to close this obligation. And this and our obligation was expiring when? In June, end of June. You needed to close these contracts. And what you notice is that upon closure, they can either be what? A profit, or they can be what? They can be a loss. That's what we learned. So these obligations, you can't run away from them. Derivatives include the following forward contracts, forward rate agreement, futures, options, and swaps. 
where do derivatives come from? We learned that some der derivatives are found at some exchanges and we call them what? Exchange traded. For instance, the futures that we're talking about are similar to forward contracts, but these are exchange traded. And also we've got some options which are exchange traded. Then you've got those that are negotiated or over the counter OTCs, the forward contracts, some swaps, and also some options. You can go to the bank and find them. Purpose of derivative products, you can use a derivative product to hedge against a known risk. For instance, in our case, we noticed that a com our company had a problem. The problem is that on 1st of June, they're expecting to receive some money. That's the problem that they had. So what did they do? We advise them to go into the futures market. And do what? Create a hedge. That's what we did. We advise them that today itself, hmm, on 1st of March, we advised our company to go and create the hedge. And they created the hedge. And we told them what was expected. We told them the expected outcome from that hedge. So we can use it like this. But you need not to be a person who has got this risk. You can also just be a speculator. You can just be a speculator. You can speculate. You can go on the futures exchange, open a position, and close your position. And if you make a profit, this profit is not being used to cushion any problems. No, you are going to enjoy the whole profit. And like a treasurer, a treasurer, when he makes a profit on the futures, it is used to cushion the loss here. But you who is just a gambler, all that profit is yours. However, if you make a loss, you have no cushion. It will be a huge loss for you. Because for a treasurer, if there's a loss on the futures, automatically there was a profit there. So his outcome won't be as terrible. So remember that you need not be, or you need not have an exposure for you to deal in derivatives. No, you can just be a speculator. So that is the point there that you must be able also to do what to mention. But you people are being trained to be treasurers of companies. So you are going to go to futures market because say, wait a minute, we have a transaction coming on 1st of June. How can we reduce the risk on this transaction? Then you create the hedge there, hoping that at least the results from there, once you combine with the results from there, ah, at least the impact will be reduced. Sometimes you can even make a, a net profit. Physical settlement and cash settlement. Physical settlement and cash settlement. So when you take, you have an obligation to buy dollars and you close by selling. It's not that you need to go to the exchange and say, give me my dollars give my dollars, I'll come with money. No, you look at the rate there 
and the red there. We work out the difference and pay your money. So we do a cash settlement. We don't necessarily say, no, me, I've come, I've come with a bag of dollars or euros. I want to buy my dollars. Give me my dollars. No, it doesn't work that way. We just compare what's the buying rate, what's the selling rate, what's the difference. We get the difference, multiply by the number of contracts, and credit your account accordingly. Okay. So let's. Uh, so what's the futures contract? The futures contract is a contract relating to currencies, like in our case, to interest rates, or to commodities or shares. But notice, they oblige the buyer or the seller to purchase the specified quantity of the item represented in the contract at a predetermined price at the expiration of the contract. The only point to take note of is that futures create an obligation for you. You can't run away from them. We spoke about the exchanges, futures and options exchange. That is a number of exchanges around the world where you can go and find these instruments. These are some of the examples of major exchanges, futures and options exchange, on which you can find the contracts that you are looking for. How do futures differ from forward contracts? Futures are standardized in terms of amounts and timing. And they are, they are traded on recognized exchange. Unlike forward contracts which are found at your bank. Futures are more liquid and have less credit risk because organized exchanges have a clearing house as a counterpart. So the futures exchange is represented by a clearing house. It's at a clearing house where you're going to make your deposits. It's at a clearing house where you're going to get your profit and all that. Futures are marked to the market. Remember what we said? Marking the market. In our question that we just looked at, on the 1st of March, you took this obligation. At the end of each closing day, we compare the buying rate and the selling rate. And if there's a loss here, remember what we said on day one itself, we are going to ask you to come and deposit some money there. We won't wait till the end, no. So therefore, when you just come, we'll ask you to put in a deposit. So this is your deposit that you're putting. That's your deposit. So if there's a loss, we're going to debit there. So the money that you put in is called an initial. Hmm? The initial margin. The initial, that's what you put in the beginning. Then there's the maintenance margin. Every time that we have debited your account, you need to come and do a top up. That's the maintenance for a top up. So, what is it that secures futures? The futures then is secured by the deposit which is there, the initial and the maintenance margins. That's what secures your system. And also the fact that we market them to the market every day, we do a mini closure as it were. That's what makes, what secures this 
derivative. What are the important features of uh, futures contracts? They are exchange traded, they are standardized, they are predetermined dates. For instance, in the question that we did, we had two, we had those that were expiring in March and those expiring in June. So as we chose the June ones. So these are, they are predetermined settlement dates. Traded at the price agreed between the buyer and the seller, the exchange there, the exchange will put up the price and you pick the price. Most futures do not run to the expiry date. Now some of us are, what does that mean? Here's what it means. Here is 1st of March. First of March, yeah. Our transaction is only first of June. That's when our money comes in. The derivative that we have expires only 30th of June. So let's start with your cash market. In the current markets, we receive our money here. Once we receive the money here, we convert accordingly. Andy, maybe we have made a loss. But we're not worried now because in the futures market, we open the position here. We are closing. So these futures, you can keep them up the end of June. Eh? No one will temper with you because their expiry date is end of June. This obligation must be closed by end of June. However, what we do is when we come to 1st of June, as soon as we are done in our current markets and we have been hammered, if it's a loss, we have been hammered. Immediately, we ask you to go into the futures market and close it also. And the profits that we make there will help us to cushion the loss there. So you don't have to wait till the end there, no. There's no need of you waiting. As a, as a responsible treasurer of the company, we expect you to quickly go to the futures, close the position, determine the position, and report accordingly. That's what we mean that most futures do not run to the expiry date. It's not necessary. Unless you are speculating. If you're speculating, maybe you hope that the price may even become much better by that date for the speculator. So once the transaction is over, you close the hedge. Close the hedge. Okay, a tick is the smallest movement in the exchange rate, which is normally quoted on the futures market for decimal places. For example, if a futures contract is for 125,000 pounds, every 0.001 movement will give a company 125 multiplied by that of 4.5 profit or loss. This is called the tick size. So remember, when you go use you go for futures, you cannot pick any amount that no me I want hundred thousand me I want one twenty uh -uh. you deal in number of contracts. So your obligations are in batches. So for one twenty five, when there is one tick movement, a tick, this is a tick, the fourth decimal place. So when there's a movement, you, your worry is, wait a minute, I've at least, at the very least, I've got one contract. What does it mean? So if there's one movement, this one, for you, because you, buy, you deal with a batch, what flashes in your mind is what? 
a profit or a loss of 12.5 multiplied by the number of contracts that you have. So when we are managing futures, we talk about ticks and tick values or tick size. So a tick is at fourth decimal point. Tick value is converting that into value for a single contract. Every one tick movement in price has the same money value on a single contract. And that's your worry. You are, you are you're talking in terms of contracts. Ticks are used to calculate the profit or the loss on a contract. Let's discuss the concept of the basis. Let's talk about the basis. Your examiners want you to explain the basis very well. Now, we told you that he, when you hate using futures, you need to have a position in the futures market and also in the currency. So we spoke about clearly about these two positions. And we, we will put a line like that. Okay, meaning that this is a derivative which has been created because of the currency. And this is where your risk is. You have got a risk here. And that is why you went to create that age. So in the futures markets, when you go there, you're going to find a rate. In the currency markets also, there's going to be a rate. There's a rate there and a rate here. The difference between these two is what we call the basis. We call it the basis. That's what we call it. The difference between the rate which the futures markets are indicating today and the rate which the banks are indicating is called the basis. This is the difference between the futures price and the current cash market price of the underlying asset. That's the first point. Secondly, this difference between these two will be dropping, will be reducing and reducing and reducing. This difference here will be reducing and reducing and reducing. That's what is that difference. On the expiry day, like in our case, on the 30th of June, on 30th of June, there'll be no difference because now the contracts have expired, everything has ended. This difference here will be narrowing and narrowing and narrowing. It's narrowing like that. And the assumption that we make is that the difference is dropping in a linear fashion. It's dropping in a linear fashion. It's dropping in a linear fashion at a constant rate such that at any point in time, we can calculate the difference. So remember, this was what? First of March. The transaction is on what day? First of June. And the expired date is what? 30th of June. The argument is that I can even calculate the expected difference here. 
And that's what we expect we are doing with that effective rate actually. That effective rate we're calculating actually, we're trying to estimate what the price will look like here. The basis will move towards zero, towards the delivery expiry date. The difference between these two will be dropping, 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 and move towards zero there. Mm -hmm. Now, let's get to your examiner's favorite question. Here's favorite question, basis risk. This is risk. This is your examiner's favorite question. They've asked this again and again. The risk that the basis will not decrease in a linear pattern. As assumed at the time of creating the hedge. So at the time of creating the hedge, what we are saying is that the difference between these two markets will be dropping at it in a linear fashion. And it's on this basis that we make, we give advice. So that advice that we gave ourselves, the 0 0.8650, we assume that there was a constant drop. We assumed a linear relationship. But in practice, the relationship may not be linear, meaning that that expected outcome that we calculated, we may never get it. That expected outcome, we may not get it. Eh? Hmm? Expected outcome, we may not get it. Why? Because of the basis risk. 0 0.86650 was calculated on the understanding that we've got a linear relationship here. So that's what we mean by the basis risk. These are some of the currencies some futures, Swiss franc, Japanese yen, sterling, and euro. So these are some of the common contract sizes that you be dealing you deal with. In terms of the quotations, traditionally, traditionally, the quotations have been in dollars. The quotations have been in dollars. So the quotations have been in dollars traditionally. But of course, now this is not relevant in which we, the method that the examiner says use, some of these things are not relevant anymore. A futures exchange, we've discussed this, I'm sure now you have an idea, that the one who decide on the specifications for the contracts, they recognize organizations which may deal directly on the exchange as brokers. So we need some brokers there to help us. They manage the initial, remember the initial margin and variation margin, the top-ups. But more importantly, they're going to appoint a clearing house hmm? who can do the disbursements, who can handle the cash. And they administer the futures transactions and settlements. What of the clearing house? They are of course appointed by the futures, by the futures exchange to represent the exchange itself. They're the ones who register and confirm all transactions in the market each day. Whenever you use the word buying and selling, what assumption are we making? There's a counterpart, isn't it? There's the person you're buying and selling with, isn't it? Yeah, so the clearing house becomes a counterparty to every transaction. 
all margins payments are made to or received from the clearing house. And how they protect themselves? It's via the system of margins. Margins on futures. Margin is the amount which are required to advance as security against possible adverse price movements in your contract. It is made up of two components, initial margin and variation margin. Marking to the market, the process of settling the gains and losses at the end of each trading day. I'm sure these things now have stuck on your mind. The concept of the initial margin and also marking to the market. Huh? Okay, here we, here we are. So we've got the step one, step two, step three. Now, if you're going to do a futures question all the way in the traditional way, we go through three steps. In step number one, we set up the hedge where we talk about it. What is the expiry date? Do we buy or sell? the number of contracts and the tick size. Then number two, most importantly, we want to know what is the closing rate for futures so that we can compare it with the opening rate and calculate the profit. So here we calculate the hedge outcome. We we'll look at the results on the futures and also the results on the currencies and combine them together. Advantages of futures offer an effective fixing of exchange rate. There's no transaction costs per se compared to the options, and these are tradable. Disadvantages, the deposit margin, that's a cash flow issue. Mm -hmm. And may not give a perfect hedge, why? because of the basis risk and also because they are standardized. For instance, if you are looking for only $100,000, that's the interest, $100,000. There's no contract for $100,000, so you need to up it to simply 125. So it means that you may get slightly more than what you need. And this will make your hedge not perfect. Okay, so we have got a, a small illustrative question there, which you can go through. Okay, a small illustrative question there, which you can go through. Okay, so we hope, uh, you have picked one or two things in relation to the futures, especially on how to answer the question. Okay. In our next class, we now look at the, the currency option. How does the, an option work? What's an option and how does it work? And we'll basically use the same questions. We're going to use the same questions. The Kenduri question and options. The one for today at options. The other one that looked at also adoption. So these questions are the ones we'll go back to and do the currency option. Then from there, we'll produce the currency swap as well. All right, people. So we we'll see you first then. Okay, thank you. Good night. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, thank you. Night.